3D hovering effect, over 13 images. Clicking on one, we open it widely. We will also cover how to work with elements in 3D space. To create this wavy, cool effect, we're gonna use HTML, CSS and JavaScript. So let's get started. The HTML part is very simple and straightforward. We create a wrapper div, and the image is parent div, and a div for each image. Yes, div, not image tag. Because we are gonna use pseudo elements, and as we know, they do not work well with the image tag. We will also create the images as a background image using style attribute. Of course, we could do the same by giving unique classes and accomplishing the rest in CSS, which would cover 39 lines of code instead of 13. I prefer this one, and this is all HTML we need. And here's what we have built so far. Beautiful, right? The thing is, we use div tags for our images, and since the divs do not have size yet, the images aren't being displayed. We start by removing default settings and giving a gradient background color. Then we move to the wrapper div, which aligns its children in the center and must be the size of the viewport. Uh, let's make our images appear to see what's going on. They look like a long column. So we align them in a row via their parent tag and give some gaps between them. Our images look as if they are zoomed in and distorted. Let's fix this by setting the background size to cover and the background position to center. Ok, we got to the interesting part, hovering effect. When any of our images is hovered, we move it up on the z-axis around 17 rems. What? What's going on? Why nothing is happening? Well, before proceeding, let's find out what perspective is and how to move elements in 3D space. Ok, here we have two viewports. The right one is typically what we see in the browser's viewport, and the left side is the 3D demonstration of our coding to see visually what is happening in 3D space. By default, we work with elements in 2D space, in so called z equals zero plane. In other words, elements lie on this plane because, as the default, they are not shifted along the z axis. As you have noticed, we cannot move elements along the z axis easily. To do that, we have to activate a perspective mode, a perspective space, and we do that by giving the elements parent tag perspective attribute, which defines the distance between the user and the z equals zero plane. By user, we mean the browser's viewport, and the distance simply means how far our browser's viewport is away from that plane, and only then we can move this parent tag's children along the z axis. Positive values make the elements larger as they get closer to the uh, user's perspective, while negative values make them smaller by moving them backward. If we give a child a larger value than the perspective value, it disappears. That's because it moves behind the user, behind what we see. The same is true when we give large negative values, thus moving the element so far away that it won't be visible anymore. Now we know why the images are not moving up along the z-axis when Howard. We give the images part and tag a perspective of 60 RAM. I don't like their instant rise up. Let's give them some smoothness on transformation around 1.25 seconds using the cubic bezierism function, which we use to accelerate the speed as we want. We save the ism function as a variable since we are going to use it in several places. When an image is hovered, we want to move up uh, four other images from both sides to get that wavy effect. Here's a challenge. How impact other elements when an entirely different element is hovered? Well, to affect the right images, we can use the plus asterisk approach. This means CSS code will be applied to whatever elements is after the hovered image. To affect the left ones, we use a has pseudo class. So, what we wrote means CSS code will be applied to a follower of an image that is hovered. After targeting these eight siblings, we move these elements symmetrically to different heights and also rotate them at different degrees to get that wavy effect.
We also give the right images the sending Z index because when we reach the clicking, the clicking effect soon, we will see that lower images overlay the higher ones while we want the reverse. On slow hovering, we notice that hovering over the gaps, we get this shaking or blinking effect. That's because the images do not cover these gaps and they're just empty spaces. So we fix this issue by covering the gaps using pseudo elements before and after. They look amazing, but let's make them more interesting by making them grey and less bright until they are hovered. Looks cool, but it would be much better if the color and brightness changed sequentially. So we also give other lifted images, filters, but with increasing grayscale and decreasing brightness. Filter effects are changing rapidly, so we add another transition on this filter about 3 seconds. We add one more attribute to images, will change, that equals transform and filter. This property hints to the browser how an element is, is expected to change and the browser sets some optimization before the changes occur. Now it's time to add the clicking effect. To trigger clicking effect we will use JavaScript, but before going to JS, first we create CSS properties of an open image. In JavaScript we set click event listener on document itself to see what element is clicked. Then we save this clicked element and all, uh, all the images in variables. So the cases are uh, the first click opens an image and the second or clicking outside closes the image. Or when an image is open we click on another image. We must close the previous one and open the newly clicked one. Well to take into consideration all of these cases we write conditions. First we check the clicked element does not contain image class, which means we are clicking outside. In that case we remove the open class from the open image. Second we check if the clicked element is open to close it. And the left case is opening an image on click. Before that we remove the open class which helps to close the previously open image and then open the clicked one. Finally, let's add some transition on opening and closing which is happening too fast. This is the final result of what we've built. Take care and talk to you soon.